Hey guys, uh, hope you're doing great. In this video, we are going to look at solving a problem where we have a row of zeros in a root array. So this is referred to as case two. So before we jump in, I quickly wanted to brush you through the basic stability analysis. The first thing that we do is build a root array. Next, we analyze the elements of the first column. If there are sign changes between the elements of the first column, that means those many roots are present in the positive half of the S-plane and the system is unstable. In this example uh, column, the sign changing is happening from minus 5 to 6 once and then I guess minus 3 twice and then to 2 three times. So the sign change is happening thrice which means the system is unstable and that there are three roots on the positive half of the S-plane. And finally, if there is a row of zeros, it doesn't matter which row it is, if the entire row is zero, that is an indication of roots on the imaginary axis. And this makes the system limitedly stable or marginally stable. Now, let us solve a root array in which an entire row of elements is zero. So let me take a characteristic equation of s power 6 plus 2s power 5 plus 8s power 4 plus 12s cube plus 20s square plus 16s plus 16 is equal to zero. Now we all know how a root array is formed. The first row, since s power 6 is the highest degree, we are going to form it with the coefficients of all the even powers of s. So the first row, s power 6, would be 1, 8, 20, and 16. And for the second row, I would write down the coefficients of all the odd powers of the equation, that would be 2, 12, and 16, which are the coefficients of s power 5, s cube, and s power 1. Now I would need to build the root array, which means I have to find out the elements for the respective rows for s power 4, 3, 2, 1 and finally s power 0. So now to build the elements of s power 4, 2 is the first uh, element of the preceding row. So I will multiply 2 into 8 minus 12 into 1 by 2. But wait a minute, um, the previous row actually has um, a common factor, a GCD or a HCF, which is 2. So I can divide the preceding row by 2 to make my calculations easier and I'm going to do just that. So on simplifying, the elements of the row S power 5 are 1, 6 and 8. So now, the first element of the s power 4 row would be 1 into 8 minus 1 into 6 by 1. Actually, I'm going to use the space on the right so that it's not too cramped. So where were we? 1 into 8 minus 1 into 6 by 1. This is our first element. Remember that in the denominator, you always have the first element of the preceding row. Let's quickly get rid of this here. So the first element of uh, s power 4 is 8 minus 6 by 1, which is 2. For the second element, we multiply 1 into 20 minus 1 into 8 by 1, which is 20 minus 8 by 1, which is 12. So one thing that a common mistake that is done is people multiply 6 into 20 minus 8 into 8. That is wrong. The multiplication always happens from the first column. And finally, for the third element, I have 1 into 16 minus 1 into, I can assume that there is a 0 in the last, uh, uh, call, uh, last element of s bar 5. So that would be 1 into 16 minus 0 by 1, which is 16. And for ease of my calculations, which I'm going to do further, I'm going to divide the entire row by 2, which is its GCD. So that would give me 1, 6 and 8. So now to find out the elements of s power 3, we are going to do 1 into 6 minus 1 into 6 by 1, that is the first element, and 1 into 8 minus 1 into 8 by 1 is the second element. So both these elements have turned out to be zeros. So we have what is commonly referred to as 
a row of zeros. Now, how do we proceed in cases like this? Because we know that division by zero is undefined. So we take the help of something called an auxiliary equation. And using the auxiliary equation, we rebuild the row of zeros into a row of non-zero elements. Now, how do we do that? The auxiliary equation is formed by using the elements of the preceding row. In this case, the row s power 4 is even and there are three elements. So the three elements would become the coefficients of three powers that is s power 4, s square and s power 0. 1, 6 and 8. Now this is our auxiliary equation. Now s cube, the, I mean the equation for s cube is formed by differentiating the auxiliary equation with respect to s which would give us 4s cube plus 12s. So now the elements of the s cube row are 4 and 12 and these elements have a highest common factor of 4 so I'm going to divide the entire row by 4 to get the elements 1 and 3. I'm just uh, clearing it out and rewriting it. So even in your exams, whenever you are creating a new row, something that has been zero and now you're making it non-zero elements, just make sure that you write it twice so that you don't miss it out in the final anal analysis. And now for the first element of S square, we have one into six minus one into three by one, which is three. And for the second element, we have one into eight minus one into zero by one, which is eight by one, that is eight. And for the first element of s power 1, we have 3 into 3 minus 1 into 8 by 3. So that would be 9 minus 8, 1 by 3. I'm gonna write that down as 0 0.33. And as you can notice that there are no further elements, the next element is just going to be 1 into 0 minus 3 into 0 by 3, which is says 0, or you can just leave it. And finally, for the element of s power 0, that would be 0 0.33 into 8 minus 0 into 3 is 0 by 0 0.33, so that would be 8. Our root array is now complete. Let us take a look at all the elements in the first column of our array. We notice that there are no sign changes from the first element to the last element of the column, which means that there are no roots for this characteristic equation that are lying in the positive half of the s-plane. But we notice that there is a complete row of zeros, which means that there are roots lying on the imaginary axis. And what do we conclude when there are roots on the imaginary axis? We mention that the system is marginally stable or the system has limited stability. So that is it guys. This is an example for case two that is a row of zeros for root stability criterion. If you guys have any queries, please leave them down in the comments below and I will try to get them to that as soon as possible. And if you guys have an exam coming up, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching and have a lovely day.